guys, today I'm going to be doing yet another survival kit. I'm really loving these videos and honestly these so many of these cold days give me a lot of time to think. So in case you guys are wondering why I'm coming up with so many, uh, that's part of the reason. Another reason is I kind of made this new piece of gear. I'll have a link in the description where you can check this out on my website. This is the prototype number one or version one of this prototype. So this one doesn't look as good as the second one that I ironically left in my house. But this one already had the survival kit in it. So that one is not here with me and the second version 2 looks a little bit better you can see it in pictures but anyways that aside i'm going to be going over my phone case survival mm -hmm. kit now keep in mind in case you don't want to buy this uh, case or the other case incorporate a lot of the different items that i have in here into other phone cases so that like, just let's get into it. In particular, so, all the contents is just right behind the phone. So pretty much just sliding it out of the way, all the kit is exposed. See a lot of stuff right so, off the bat is two band-aids. And I really like having band-aids, as I've mentioned in other survival kits, uh, just right here. Because one of the first things that you're likely going to use in a survival or everyday carry situation is likely just band-aids. If you cut yourself or if one of your kids cuts themselves or just hurts themselves in any way, band-aids are a good little quick way to fix it. So I have two band-aids in here. They get a little bit roughed up. Uh, just because of the whole sliding action but that is the first thing you'll see in here so the next thing you'll see and i'm just kind of going to go into this in random i did have two of these i just had a couple laying around i just threw one of them in here really fast but um, this is a safety pin this thing can hold easily four of them i generally have a couple in here but I've been rearranging and doing stuff with the survival kit, so one of them's not in here, but this is just here to show that you can definitely carry a safety pen, and usually I do have a couple in here. Uh, the second thing I have, or third thing I have in here, is some snare wire, and this is rolled up. This is about, I think, around five feet of snare wire. Uh, as I've mentioned before, snare wire is a great thing for setting snares. Uh, sorry, this is not snare wire, this is trip wire. <laughs> but trip wire, it's a great thing for setting traps or snares. It's also yet another cordage. It's one of the most compact, tough cordages you can actually get. You know, monofilament line is great, but it's actually pretty weak. Whereas trip line is the same size, maybe slightly thicker than monofilament, but it's a lot tougher. And plus you get it in awesome camo colors. So the next piece I have in here kind of goes hand in hand with this piece. And this is triple aught, or sorry, quad aught steel wool. And I have this in here just as a really easy way of getting an ember to start a fire. Another great thing that I ironically don't have are tinder. Uh, what are they like, tinder quicks? You guys all know what I'm talking about, like the small little piece of tinder. Those are another great option to throw in here. I just don't have them in here because I don't have any, sadly. I don't really know why, but this is probably what I'm most proud of. And this is really three things in one. Not, number one you see here is a rubber band, and I'm going to take this apart for you guys. I just essentially coiled this like you can see here. This is a pretty big rubber band, and I really wanted a pretty big rubber band because the bigger it is, the more uses it can have. So you can see there, you know, a pretty big rubber band. Uh, I'd say it's probably medium size in all reality. Then I have that coiled around a Ziploc bag that's once again a smaller but still pretty big Ziploc bag and that's for containment and then on the inside of it just to help this bag coil so nicely as you can see I have a ferro rod and this is just a normal Exotac Nano Striker XL ferro rod as I'm very known for using in survival kits. And I really love that because you have, you know, additional cordage in the rubber band. You have a container for this uh, plastic bag, and then you have combustion right there in the ferro rod. So I'm really excited that I kind of thought of that and figured that out. I was really excited for that. And then lastly, and I've talked about this in the, uh, what was it, knife survival kit. Uh, they included a knife in that one, and I definitely have these small surgical blades but I don't generally like to use them in the knife survival kit, but I thought it fit really well, and it sat just perfectly in between this all three of these cordages here, and so it just nestles. So if you put a little bit of time into it, it nestles right there. It actually sits just right there, and so that is cutlery. So I have almost all, I have four of the five C's of survivability right there. Obviously, I couldn't really put cover in here. There was no way I could really put cover, and then 
Lastly, on the outside of this container, and do keep in mind this is a prototype container, so you will see like, this is made out of PVC, but I do have this is not paracord, but this is tack cord, which is the next step down from paracord. And I have it in blaze orange, because obviously this is a survival kit. You want to get found. You don't really want to hide. So this is in blaze orange uh, tack cord. And tack cord has a 250 pound uh, limit, which is still very good for survival, uh, considering that, you know, not even this old tripwire has that. You know, this is still a pretty strong cordage. Uh, you know, than anything you would find or be able to make out in the woods. Maybe not find, but definitely make out in the woods. Uh, so that is the additional and primary. This is about six feet of tack cord all spooled in here. Here's the uh, cordage, and so I have several layers of cordage as you can see. Uh, you know, I have band-aids, which is a, not a part of the five C's, but certainly nice. And then I have, which is also not a part of five C's, uh, steel wool, which is part of combustion, the ferro rod, which is largely a part of combustion, the surgical blade, which is cutlery, this plastic bag for container. So I think I actually did a really good job, not to just talk myself up here, but I'm actually really excited about how much stuff I was able to put in a tiny little phone case. And once again, this gives you the awesomeness of still having your phone. And with your phone, you know, you can download a GPS. So that adds the compass part of it or GPS slash compass as an app that are free. So that gives you, you know, a compass as an additional sea of survivability. And then on most phones, while I'm not highly recommending it, they also have a flashlight feature. At least with my phone, you don't even have to download an app for it. It just has a flashlight feature in it. So that gives you candlelight. So you're actually looking at like six C's of survivability all in this tiny little kit. And so I was pretty impressed about how all this turned out. And like I said, if you guys would like to know more about this case, just check out the link in the description below. And uh, don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and let me know what your thoughts are on this phone survival kit. Uh, and, uh, so guys, this is a separate day, but uh, I referenced in the first part of this video the 2.0 case, and I wanted to show it quickly in the end of this video and just kind of talk about what more these cases will kind of really look like. Of course, this is once again an HTC One M9 case. Case has buttons on this side. It will be cut out for those buttons. This is also kind of optioned out with the whole optional paracord back here. You can see I changed it up from the first uh, kit or the 1.0 kit in the fact change it up a bit where now I have paracord back here and I wanted to make this case as everyday usable and useful as possible so unlike in the 1.0 kit where there was just cord there for your assistance this actually you know has a little band on it so that you can actually hold it with either hand you guys, you guys see there you know and it actually is useful you can see you know this phone isn't going to drop out and so it's a more usable feature it's also a stand as you can see there uh, it is actually pretty nice for that if you like to watch YouTube a lot. You know, it's a, a stand you can set your phone on as well. So, it is also nice though, it does compact down. So if you want to put this into your pocket, it fits just fine. In addition with the 2.0 things that I also changed was the shape of the back. If you guys noted, that's how I carry the survival kit on the phone. But with this one, I've actually made a jig now that has or allows for a very controlled, uh, larger space than the one before it. Uh, previously, I was just using a casing to make those uh, or that kind of divot in the back. But now I actually use a jig, so it's a lot more consistent and it's a lot larger of an area. Now, I do have everything that I talked about in the first part of this video still in there. Uh, I've actually added the other safety pin, but that's pretty much the only addition aside from the paracord switching it up. And the paracord option will be available uh, soon with it. In addition, as far as phone cases go, I will very soon be adding the Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy S6, the iPhone uh, 6 Plus, and the iPhone 5S, and the iPhone SE. So those will be coming very soon. So those will be coming very soon as far as phone cases go. And as of course, if you guys want to contribute a phone case yourself or a phone so that I can make the mold for phone cases, uh, definitely uh, hit me up in the comment section below. I would really appreciate it <laughs> to get as many different types of phones would be awesome. But anyways, guys, that pretty much rounds out this video and I'm out.